call to order. This is the 24th regular meeting of the 2010-2011 Common Council, and as is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will read us the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. It is time to break the habit of expecting something for nothing from our government or from each other. Let us all take more responsibility, not only for ourselves and our families, but for our communities and our country. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Warren. Here. Bauk. Excused. Bowers. Here. Decker. Here. Hammond. Aye. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Koth. Here. Kittleson. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Raisler. Here. Sampson. Here. Vanderweel. Excused. Versi. Excused. And Wangaman. Here. 13 present. We have a quorum. Now if we can all join Alderman Wangaman in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag. flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Bill. Looking for approval of the minutes of the former Common Council meeting. Thank you, Mayor. I would move to approve the minutes of the last Common Council meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes under discussion. If there is no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> public forum. Uh, yes, this evening we have one on public forum. Jeff Middleton, if you would like to come up to the front, to the microphone, please. Right there. My first time. <laughs> Jeff, can you give me your home address, please, City? Sure can. 33 Hine Avenue. Okay. Plymouth. All right, and you will have five minutes, sir. And I get an extra if I'm nice? Is that correct? If you're nice, if you get to ask nice. for an extra. <laughs> I'm going to try to be nice because <laughs> I'm just doing my job up here. So please don't take a lot, too much of this personally if you can. Uh, my name, as she said, is Jeff Middleton. I am the uh, AFSCME staff representative. I represent uh, two of your employee groups, uh, about 70 City Hall employees, and about 90 of your Public Works employees. I've also had the opportunity this week to speak to a lot of your policemen, your firemen, uh, some of the transit employees, and then there's another union group that I just call Local 5011 because they belong to a nurses union, but that's not what they do, so it's, I'm a little confused, but I just moved here, so. Your Honor, um, Alder Persons, is that right? That's hard to get out. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for letting me be here tonight. Um, Actually, um, I don't have to thank you because it's my right to be up here speaking to you. It's not just my job. Um, and this is somewhat about rights. It's somewhat about elections. And it's about what's doing what's fair and what's doing what's right. And I don't think what happened in this last election in the fall and what they're doing now was done right. And I think um, some of what you guys are experiencing or what we're certainly experiencing is a fallout of all that. There's a lot of opportunities on the table. Uh, I don't blame you for looking closely at them, but um, I don't believe they're fair, and they're certainly not fair to the represent people I represent. Collectively, uh, your employee groups are offering near nearly a million dollars in concessions that do not seem to be enough for you. And um, your managers, your directors, want us to go back and offer more to you. Your Honor, you were quoted in Saturday's paper saying that the city, um, that the ideas we came up with were not in the best interests of the city at this time. You also said that the concessions we offered were not enough. You said it, you wanted us to knock your socks off. I think that was somebody else's words actually, but it <laughs> sounded good. Uh, when it appears that what you really wanted to do was to strip us of our bargaining rights and take our socks away from us. The human resources director that I work for refuses to tell us what he wants us to concede. He specifically asked, we specifically asked for some proposals and then they refused and he said they refused to do our work for us. The finance director says that our concessions were not enough and were very similar to Governor Walker's budget repair bill. He says that all we want to do is maintain our bargaining rights and I guess that's true but Please show me in the bill where it says anything about offering contract extensions, foregoing longevity increases, and taking pay freezes. I think we came up with those ideas, not Governor Walker. 
These are proposals that are opposed by three out of four residents of this state. These proposals come from a governor that three out of five people think is not doing a very good job right now. And now we're being told by your management team that these same really popular proposals are not only not good enough to bring to you, but they also want us to give you more. And by the way, when they refute these numbers and say that they're not even close to being a million dollars, and they will say that to you, um, please ask them to cost out our proposals and tell us what they are worth, because they won't tell us. We asked them to crunch the numbers, and they refused to share the value of our savings that we are offering. In the past, as many of you know, people I represent have made several concessions to help offset health care expenses specifically. This year alone, they're taking pay freezes. And at the end of this year, they're supposed to get some scheduled year-end raises, but your management team wants us to give those back, too. In the past, we've watched fellow workers get laid off. We've absorbed the extra workload, continue to pro provide services to the residents of the city, and have done so without many complaints. When word of this gets out, and it will get out, Please tell me why anybody is ever going to want to work for this city ever again. Seriously, you're going to find it very hard to attract and retain good people if this is how they're treated. This is a one-time opportunity from, for some of our concessions. We have offered to start paying the pension and health care concessions right now. If you don't approve something soon, you can never get that money back no matter what you do. The new law says we'll have to start paying in January, but again, we're offering these savings now, and they're saying to us that this isn't good enough. There's a limit to what the people I represent can give. There's a limit to how much money you can take away from their households. The pension and health care concessions alone amount to over $3,000 annually in take-home pay, not to mention any future pay raises they may be forced to concede in January. Please, on behalf of my members, try to find some balance and fairness during these troubling times. Excuse me, Jeff. All we ask for is dignity and respect. Very good. You're just under. Ah, <laughs> Thank, you. Good, huh? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Um, That's it. If I can say, I have all due respect for uh, Mr. Middleton and uh, his unions and uh, that he represent, and uh, we do look forward to uh, future discussions with them. All of our decisions that we're making in the city at this point are done on a financial basis. Uh, it's, all based on, it's all based on financial reality and economics, and that's, that's where we're at at this point. So thank you for speaking, Jeff. Okay, moving on. Um, we have Wendy Schmitz in the annual report for the Senior Activity Center. You may. <laughs> it was bothering Marge? Yes. Open it up. <laughs> <laughs> the irony of having to follow my neighbor, Jeff, as I give this little talk, and uh, the irony of what you quoted, Sue, at the beginning of the meeting. A couple of weeks ago, I met, oh, I'm sorry, I am the supervisor of the Senior Activity Center for those people who don't know me. Can you hear, Marge? Okay. A couple of weeks ago, I met and introduced myself to a council member. I told him that I would soon be giving my annual report. He joked that, of course, I would be asking for money. This is my sixth year as supervisor, and I have never asked for money. I took up his challenge, though, and I'm here to tell you how we do what we do. We no longer host the county nutrition site, but we have maintained participation numbers, growing by six <coughs> new members every week. <coughs> Sometimes it's hard to find parking. We are not your typical senior center. Over the past five years, I have had my city staff cut by 50%. I now have two part-time facilitators paid by the city and a very part-time volunteer coordinator. She works, is paid, for eight to 10 hours a week by the Friends organization. They all do an incredible job 
for the seniors in this community. My city paid staff have worked, one for 28 years and one for 16. They continue to develop new programs that meet the changing needs of our seniors. Marion Health has trained for and teaches a Zumba class that has changed the entire atmosphere of the center. Our building resounds with the music of the Black Eyed Peas and people moving to a Latin beat. All of her fitness programs are full, some with waiting lists. We have more men participating in fitness programs than ever before. Jeannie Mullen has developed pottery, painting, and stained glass classes, and has a new program of cooking classes, which are very popular, as you can also eat the lunch that other people learn how to make. Her art trips last year included Key Largo, Florida, and Plum Island, Door County. This year, the art and photography group are going to the St. Ives Art and Music Festival in Cornwall, England. I had a little bit of something to do with that. We look forward to seeing a display of their work in October. Many of our programs are led by volunteers sharing their expertise. When we give tours, people are amazed that there are 33 volunteer-led activities to choose from. Our volunteer program is thriving. The Friends of the Senior Activity Center, the grassroots nonprofit support group, invests in training and supporting our unpaid program leaders. 76 regularly scheduled volunteers, that's not the number that we have working, but the 76 regularly scheduled donated 4,800 hours last year, or the equivalent of $85,409. And that figure is calculated using the national average from a site used by volunteer coordinators. In comparison, the Madison Senior Center, which is nationally known for its volunteer program, had 300 volunteers donating 6,000 hours. That bears repeating. 300 people in Madison gave 6,000 hours. 76 people in Sheboygan gave 4,800 hours. Dot Clark, our volunteer coordinator, has established a good relationship with the Cola Company. Last year, their international compensation department chose our facility for a team building exercise. A team from India, China, France, England, and the US designed, paid for, and painted one of our rooms. The Cola Company volunteers have now painted two bathrooms, the great room, the Tai Chi room, and provided our coffee cart. We have worked hard to encourage local companies to offer programs too. Our monthly card party, bingo, breakfast for the brain, brain health classes, educational, educational and financial presentations, and monthly pancake breakfasts are all paid for by them. In fact, we put out donation boxes at the same time, and our breakfast last week made a further $73. In 2010, as a community partner of John Michael Kohler Arts Center, we participated in the Liz Lerman Dance Exchange. We hosted food sales at two of their festivals, and this month, our Digital Camera Club worked with Celeste Nelms, the artist in residence, for the Time Slips Project. 2010 was also the pilot year for the Walking Bus Project. A group of seniors walk children to Grant School every Wednesday in the fall to raise awareness of walking, getting to know your neighbors, and creating a safe environment. We will be doing it again this spring. Our volunteers were also asked to cater an open house for a local business for which we were paid. We hosted a Chamber of Commerce After Hours event, and we sponsored two of the Mayor's Concert Series selling beer and brats to make money for our center. We are now working with two less staff and 25% less funding than we had in 2003. Our funding is a half a percent of the total city budget. The senior population, on the other hand, is growing rapidly. 
19,000 people turn 65 years old every day in the US. So how do we do it? We manage with the support of the friends and the people who use the center every day. I had to bring my props. I used to be a preschool teacher. We have a saying, every penny counts. We literally count every penny. We charge a dollar for computer tutoring. We sell donated bakery to people who come in for free tax preparation offered by our ARP volunteers. We have coin boxes near printers and copiers. We sell used DVDs. People watch them and then bring them back to sell again. It is Sheboygan. We bring plants and vegetables <laughs> from our gardens and sell them for small change. We have a shop where people sell their jewelry, knitted items, cards, etc. We offer international trips and make commission on them. My husband donated a week of his time to help me take 89 seniors to Branson, Missouri. The center made money from that. We contract with a company to print our newsletter. Last year, we made $3,300 from the sale of advertising. Over 450 people choose to pay an annual activity fee, and we receive donations from individuals. I have a very generous and frugal staff. They look for bargains and donations constantly. We take the money that the city gives us to maintain the building, and with the support of the Friends organization, we are able to stretch every dollar. Do you have to come to the pay to come to the senior center? Absolutely not. We are open to every senior who needs a place to socialize and stay healthy and independent. But we have many people who are willing to pay what they can afford for the center that is so important to them. We are not your typical senior center. We have five table tennis players who received medals at the Badger State Games last year. And we can again boast that we have a state champion. The Friends of the Senior Activity Center were nominated for the Chamber of Commerce Nonprofit of the Year Award, as was Evelyn Prevenus for Volunteer of the Year. Last year, I invited the mayor and the city council to join Evie on a skydiving trip. You laughed. We had 14 seniors, three of them, including Evie, who were over 80 years old, jump out of planes on a very hot July day. Six of them were seen on YouTube, and Dr. Zorba, pastor of public radio fame, mentioned them on his show. You have another chance. This year, Evie is taking two more trips, so this time we offer you a challenge to jump out of planes alongside them. Evie exemplifies the enthusiasm and energy of today's volunteers. She inspires others and works hard to create a place where people can learn, stay healthy, have fun, and maintain their independence. Next month is National Volunteers Month. Mark Scogan, the CEO of Festival Foods, is coming to the center to make a presentation about volunteerism. You'll see your invitations on your desks. Please join us. Is everything great at the center? No. We struggle to maintain a very old building, and our biggest challenge is getting the news out to all the taxpayers who deserve to enjoy our services. When I give presentations to groups, I say that we are the city's hidden gem. One of our volunteers suggested we are the jewel in the crown. <laughs> Finally, I would like to thank Marilyn Montemeyer and Julie Kath for their work on the Senior Activity Center Commission. It's been a productive year. And I'd like to thank, if he would stand, Richard Manny, who is the president of the Friends and also a commission member. Thank you. It's not very often that you hear an annual report actually get a round of applause, but uh, <laughs> we, we have to hand it to Wendy and to uh, Richard Manny and the Friends of the Senior Center. 
Um, and on the skydiving thing, I myself, I have no fear of skydiving, but that YouTube stuff scares, scares the heck out of me. So. <laughs> uh, Alderman Hanna, did you have something? Yeah, I just had a couple. Uh, could you? I just have two questions. Please. I'm sorry. Thank you. Again, and if you don't know the answer to this, I didn't, don't mean to put you on the spot. I see now that the, the uh, city budget, uh, city is 69% of your budget and the friends are 31%. When you first joined us, do you have any idea of what the split was then? Um, when I first joined, the yeah. city was 100%. Okay. And secondly, I have to recognize one of my constituents, Ruth Barron's, Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite constituents mm -hmm. just loves what you guys do there. And I commend you for all your hard work. Well, thank you. She's one of the people who does my, a lot of the work. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Okay, moving along, uh, Mayor's announcements on a uh, solemn note. Uh, former Mayor uh, Dick Schneider, uh, who is, uh, has always been a true... Uh, champion and cheerleader of the city of Sheboygan. He was the guy waving the Sheboygan flag for many years um, and always has done so. Uh, Dick is not doing well these days, so let's keep him in our prayers. Um, moving on, uh, April 5th, which is uh, coming up a week from Tuesday? Two weeks. Two weeks from tomorrow yeah. uh, is election day. Uh, we have... Uh, I believe eight aldermanic seats or nine up for election. I urge everybody to get out and vote. You know, some people look at aldermanic elections as uh, not that important. And it's, uh, you know, the turnout when it's only aldermanic elections and we have some judges' positions this time are generally low. But all politics starts at the local level. And in this city, everything <laughs> is decided by the Common Council. You know, the mayor makes suggestions, but the Common Council gets the vote on them. So, you know, the way I see it, and I've said it before, if you don't vote, you don't have a right to complain. So please, get out there and vote. If you don't vote, you don't have a right to compliment either. So if people don't get out and vote, um, you, you, you take what you get. So please, everybody get out and vote April 5th. Uh, the month of April, uh, we will have uh, some, uh, a different uh, Common Council schedule, obviously. Um, April 6th will be our next Common Council meeting, which is a Wednesday, and that is the day after the election. The next Common Council meeting in April will be April 18th, which is a Monday, and that is the last meeting of this Common Council. That will be the last meeting of this Common Council. April 19th is Tuesday, which is the first meeting of the new Common Council. Um, our elections elections are done on the final on the last first. And election our this this is our organizational meeting will be on the nineteenth, so election of president, vice president, right. et cetera will happen. We'll swear in all the aldermen. So election of vice president, vice president will be on the on the nineteenth committee of the whole um, city planning, et cetera. All, the, all of the elected positions on the council. And then uh, the fourth meeting of April will be on April 25th, which is a Monday again, and that will be confirmation of all mayoral appointments. So we have a busy schedule coming up in April. Um, this election will, will uh, determine the face of the council for the, uh, for the next coming year. And there's a, you know, there's a, a lot of issues at, uh, at stake here. So I urge everybody to please uh, get out and uh, exercise your right to vote. Just Vice President Rindfleisch. Uh, thank you. Um, as I saw the looks from the people sitting next to you, while I don't believe they're contested elections, they are also on the ballots as well. <laughs> uh, Madam City Clerk and City Attorney, uh, you failed to mention them. Also, if you want to mention uh, tomorrow that there is a chance for people to see uh, their candidates at the forum hosted by the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, yes, there is a Chamber of Commerce uh, forum. I believe it's tomorrow and Wednesday. Yes. Tomorrow and Wednesday, and the time on that is? I'm at 640, that's all I know. Six, six, six o'clock. If you'd like to see Alderman Rinfle, she's at 640, we know that much. Start at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock? Both evenings. At the, at the chamber office. At the chamber offices, which is now in the, on the corner of 8th and Virginia. So, thank you, Vice President Rinfle. 
And that is all we have for uh, mayor's announcements. Moving on, we have uh, five public hearings this evening. I will go through these. Uh, first public hearing is for the proposed water main installation project on South Business Drive from Whedon, Whedon Creek Road to 225 feet south of Riverdale Avenue. Number two, for the proposed assessments for the calendar year 2010 against all benefited property in Parking Assessment District 1. Number three, for the proposed assessments for the calendar year 2010 against all benefited property in Parking Assessment District 2. Number four, for the proposed assessments for the calendar year 2010 against all benefited property in Parking Assessment District 4. And number five, for the proposed assessments for calendar year 2010 against all benefited property in Parking Assessment District 5. Is there anybody that would like to be heard regarding these hearings? Sir, you'd like to be heard? Yes. Uh, if you can come up front, please. Yes, you do, if you'd like to be heard. May I ask uh, which, uh, which of these you'd like to be heard on? Okay, the water main on South Business Drive. Yes. Sir, can I have your name? My name is Patrick. Pat, and how do you spell your last name? How do you spell your last name? Lake. Oh, Lake, I didn't hear it, I'm sorry. And your address? 813 Riverdale Avenue. Riverdale. Okay, go ahead. <sighs> I was just assessed this bill for $2,500. And it is noted as frontage of Business 42 South. <sighs> I feel I should not have to pay for any part of this new water main. My address is 2813 Riverdale Avenue and does not front Business 42 South in any way. The water main is not for me, my subdivision, or myself. I've already paid for my main, my sewer, the line from the street to my home, the curbing, and the street. I've paid my dues, and at $4,500 a year for property taxes, I continue to pay my dues. I truly believe that the people who will receive this water should be responsible for the costs of their fresh water. <sighs> there is a reason that certain people are leaving Sheboygan to relocate elsewhere, and this is one of them. After 48 years, born and raised here, I'm feeling that way too. So please, please reconsider billing me for this water main. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Patrick. Pat. It's been a while. We'll catch up. How's your, uh, how's your <laughs> handicap? I won't be 48 until next month, by the way. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Mr. Lake. Is there anybody else that would like to be heard regarding these hearings? Is there anybody else that would like to be heard regarding any of these hearings? And for the third time, is there anybody else that would like to be heard? If there is not, President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to close all five of the hearings. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the hearings under discussion. There under discussion, Alderman Bowers. Uh, thank you. I would just like a description of what uh, really what the uh, parking assessment for districts one, two, four, and five, just what this entails. Uh, parking assessment, Chad. <clears throat> the businesses in the central commercial district, which basically includes um, 8th Street, uh, some of Indiana, Riverfront, and South Pier are in those parking assessment districts, and uh, central commercial entities aren't required to have off-street parking. The city provides that parking, but then they assess back um, for maintenance and different things related to the parking district. So it's the parking lots and the streets, and it's the maintenance on a yearly basis that they do for plowing and snow removal and those types of things. So it, the business then gets assessed as if it was their own parking, but the city is providing that. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Thank you, Chad. Alderman Hanna? I also had a 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I also had a question for Chad to elaborate on number one. Can you elaborate on number one, Chad? As in, as, as in is this a fairly Mr. Lake's concern? That, that, I, that would have to be the water utility. That's not, I was just speaking on the parking assessment districts. Okay. Ryan we, Sassman, we have Ryan Sassma, city oh. engineer, who's probably familiar with this. Please bring Ryan, may bring Ryan come up, please. So move. Motion to second to bring Ryan up. All in favor say aye. 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 Ryan. What's, what's your question again? My question is, is this a fairly typical concern by residents? Yeah, it's. The water utility has has assessment rules just like we do for roads and storm sewers and that type of thing, and that's I'm sure I'm sure they're following their their, their ordinance rules. But that, that that but this is an assessment that's coming from the Sheboygan Water Utility, not from the not from the city of Sheboygan. And I have a follow up question, Mayor. Can we vote on all of these individually rather than as a group? Yeah, it's in the Alderman Hannah. The hearings this is, this you would is. this is just the hearing. The documents themselves that do this are in the consent agenda. You could pull if you wanted to you. one of them. Appreciate that. Yep. Thank you, Ryan. Mm -hmm. um, I do think we have to remember the Sheboygan Water Utility does operate as an independent utility that is uh, controlled by the Board of Water, U Water Commissioners. Commissioners. Correct. Um, even though it is part of the city, it is an independent entity that operates with autonomy. Thank you, Ryan. I'll wait till the document comes up. Alrighty. Okay. Um, so we have a motion and a second to close, close the, the hearings. Hearing. Is there any further discussion? If there is none, all in favor of closing the hearings, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, on the consent agenda, we have 24 1 through 24 21. President Kittleson. Mr. Mayor, I move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file, all RCs be accepted and adopted, and all resolutions and ordinances be passed. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. We had Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in the same vein as Alderman Hanna and Alderman Rinfleish, I believe, was going to make it. I'd like to poll 24 8 um, um, for a separate vote. Um, this, this is the first I'm hearing of anything. This is my district. Um, and Alderman Rinflish's district, not heard anything from it, never been contacted, and I would like an opportunity to vet this a little further before um, we vote on it. Okay, uh, we have a motion to pull 24-8. Did he receive a second? No. Second. I, I'll second it. We have a motion and a second and a third. And a third. Okay. <laughs> uh, do we, do we, we don't need to take a vote on pulling that. Okay, well, well we will pull 24-8 for a separate vote. Alderman Rinfleisch, did you have anything else on this? Uh, yeah, um, my motion on that would be to hold on the document instead of vote on it. Uh, but my question on that would be uh, because it's coming from a separate utility that we don't have control over, yet my name's on a document uh, providing police powers to this utility to go ahead and um, charge these, these um, assessments, uh, and yet I have, no, I have no say over if, I can do, if they do so or not. Is that correct? Steve? Uh, you, you can withdraw your name from the resolution, but I believe uh, you know, it, it, your name and Alderman Hammond's name are on there because traditionally the, uh, right. the Alder people whose district the area covers uh, are put on there. But. I'm not opposed to having my name on the document in the sense that uh, you know, it is district, it's tradition, otherwise how would we possibly get any documents through? I have no problem with that. My concern ultimately though is we have a, a particular citizen who I think provides a, a good argument for not being assessed. Uh, I understand that the water utility has their own assessment rules. They're not here to speak on it, however. Uh, none of the board or the, the chairman of the board is here to speak on that one. Uh, and yet they expect us to take action on this evening on what sounds like to me is a good argument that, uh, of not being assessed. But I don't know if that's a good enough argument based on the rules and the law. Uh, so I would rather to hold this document until next time, invite the, the water commissioners to our next meeting, uh, and uh, uh, allow them to, to explain to the citizens why um, you know, they're being assessed for water they're not using. 
Vice President Rindfleisch, what we'll do then is we will take 24 1, uh, 24 1 through 24 7, and 24 9 through 24 21. Uh, that will be on the consent agenda, and we will take 24 8 separately. Okay. Alderman Bowers, did you have anything? Um, yeah, thank you. 2420, I, I don't have any problems. It's just that uh, if someone from that committee could tell me what streets, I, I think I know, but people have asked me, and I'm not clear what's, what streets uh, are for reconstruction in 2011. So if uh, I, I believe uh, uh, Alderman Boren, if you could elaborate just a little bit on that. Thank you. Those streets are all listed on the on the uh, document in your in your package, right? Yeah, the streets are all, all listed. If you go to uh, twenty four twenty in your package, and you will see that. Uh, you don't, it's not connected. Oh, it's okay. Not attached to theirs. Can you just read sure. those off, Sue? So sure, Alderman Bowers. What it is is um, Project A is Huron Avenue, North Tenth to North Fourteenth. Okay. All right. And then it's there's a whole bunch of them. There's Project A, B, C, D, and Alternate One. It looks like it's New York, Wisconsin Center, North Seventh to Six, Sixth Street, Penn Avenue to Center, Wisconsin Avenue to Washington, um, South Eighteenth Street, Washington to Fox Hill Road, and an alternate. An alternate number one is uh, North Fifth, Wisconsin to Washington. These were uh, these were passed through. Uh, uh, capital improvements this year, and also some of them were added with the additional money we got uh, as a Christmas present from uh, the state on uh, some extra CDBG money, I believe it was, correct, Chad? So these have all already been approved through other committees. Right. We can get you a copy of the resolution if you want so you can answer your constituents. Fine, thank you. Okay, is there any further discussion? We will take uh, 24... One, twenty-four seven, and uh, twenty-four nine through twenty-four twenty-one on the consent agenda. Roll call, please. Warren. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. And Wangaman. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries on 24-8. Vice President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you. I move to hold to our next uh, regular scheduled common council. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to hold this document. Under discussion? There is none. All in favor of holding, say aye. 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 Opposed? We will hold that document. <coughs> thank you. Okay, moving along, communications and petitions, 2422 to be referred. Reports of officers to uh, 2423 through 2432 to be referred, uh, with the exception of 2426 will be pulled. 2426 will be, uh, will be pulled. Resolutions introduced three, 2433 through 2435 lies over. 2436 through 2437 to be referred. Report of committee four, 2438 to be referred. Report of committee five, 2439 to be referred. Report of committee seven, 2440 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 1055 based upon his failure to include all relevant convictions on his application and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Vice President Rindfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second. Thank you. Is uh, Robert Scheibel here? He's not here, Your Honor. Please continue. Uh, thank you. Uh, based on the description that was given and the report from my committee, I was not present at that meeting I was, as I was on vacation in Florida. Uh, but we do, uh, I do take my committee's recommendation to deny at this time based on non-cooperation. Thank you, Vice President Rindfleisch. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Bowers? Aye. 
Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Samson? Aye. Longman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries 2441 by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license number 8169 based upon his record of violations and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Vice President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion in a second. Under discussion. Is Andrew P. Marks here? He's not here, Your Honor. Please continue. Uh, likewise, uh, based on non cooperation, we uh, move uh, that the recommend that the license be denied. Okay, we have a motion and a second to deny the license under discussion. <coughs> if there is no discussion, roll call, please. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Wongman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Bowers? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 2442 by law and licensing recommending approving a change of premise for Sheboygan Resort <laughs> Operator LLC. Vice President Renfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Renfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren. Aye. Bowers. Aye. And Decker. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Reports of committees 8, 2443 by finance recommending allocating $40,000 from the medical insurance account to be used for incentive programs sponsored by the Wellness Committee for Health Risk Analysis and Biometrics Programs for Employees. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, move the report of committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> I didn't vote for this in uh, the Finance Committee, and I'm not going to vote for it tonight. Uh, first of all, I want to commend uh, Alderperson uh, Kittleson and her Insurance Committee for the fine work that they've been doing in creating awareness of, uh, uh, of the city employees having good health and uh, participating in the various programs. Uh, in this day and age of all of the awareness that's been made for people to stay healthy, I can't support spending $40,000 as an incentive for people to be taking a health risk analysis and biometrics. To me, in this day and age, there should be no, there should be no uh, incentive necessary for that. Now, I guess there can be an argument made that if we spend the $40,000 on the other end, we may send, save more money, but uh, I just can't support uh, giving a $75 incentive for each employee to take part in this when this should be just common sense that you would do this. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Next we have Alderman Hanna. I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to agree with Alderman Boren. Uh, the, the issue here uh, is that the health risk assessment and the biometrics, they're free to the employee. The $75 is merely to incent them to do this. Um, the insurance fund uh, are there monies in the insurance fund? Yes. Are they allocated for incentives? No. Uh, so I think we need to step back from this, uh, realize that these are free risk assessments, free biometrics tests. Um, people need to take personal responsibility. And so I'm going to join Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I, I sat in um, on the group health and wellness committee in, in for uh, Alderman Versi, and the discussion for the incentives. I, I have no I have no issue with handing out incentives for folks who have proven <clears throat> that they've already done what helps them live a healthier lifestyle, uh, and it's just somebody who's proven that they're willing to take the necessary steps. I, I don't know if I like the incentive. Uh, to give somebody some small amount of cash or some type of a card as that type of incentive just to come in to take the type of testing uh, that will then help them go down the line of living a healthier lifestyle. So if, if we could, if I could just get just some clarification because I didn't realize that that was actually passed, the type of incentives that were going to be used, but that was the last thing that we, that we discussed was the $75 gift card to get people in 
to be willing to take the test, but there were a lot of concerns from folks in that meeting as to why people would not come in and take the test for fear of public knowledge or public information for what their, their health issues. So my concern is giving somebody a $75 gift card, are they coming in for the gift card or are they coming in because they really truly want to live a healthier lifestyle? So I, I, I don't think I'm gonna vote yes for this either. If we could just get somebody to clarify exactly what the incentives, incentives are, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sampson. Uh, President Kittleson, if you'd like to speak about the incentives. Thank you. I, I guess I, I would like to refer to uh, Tom Rice, our, our HR manager here. If you'd come up and just clarify. Um, we've been working at this for a long time, our wellness committee, and, and we know uh, it, it's tough to get people to, to uh, get on board with many of the programs that we have, and we have been offering them some of these things, but for people to really we need people to take them seriously, and uh, uh, we've done, we've tried every angle, and, and again, we're just, we need to incentivize people to do this uh, till the time comes that maybe it's, uh, you know, important, really an important issue to them, and uh, uh, we just have to keep working at it. So if, if Tom could come and explain a little bit more. Tom. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, Alder Persons, the $40,000 that we're requesting to come out of the uh, medical insurance fund <clears throat> is going to be used primarily to fund an incentive card, if you will, a, a visa card or something like that, uh, to incent people to come in and have a health risk analysis done and a biometric feedback, which is the first step in uh, managing your own health. If I were to ask you in this room, how many of you know your numbers, I wonder how many of you'd raise your hand in terms of blood pressure, in terms of uh, <laughs> body mass index, in terms of uh, cholesterol, on and on and on. <laughs> then you're the exception to the rule because most people don't have a clue what those numbers are. And as to Mr. or Alderman Bourne's concern about people should do that just as a matter of course, the people this is targeted for are not the people that are going to do it automatically. This is targeted for the guy who drinks a, a case of beer a week or a month, who uh, eats donuts on a regular basis and doesn't, hasn't been to a doctor in 25 years. And those are the people who are high risk for heart attacks, for cancer, for all kinds of things. In working with UMR and any other health risk assessment organization, they're going to tell you that if you don't incent people, they're not going to do it. And therefore, that's the reason why we did it. If you recall, back in 2008, we changed and went with Humana. And the first year we were with Humana, we asked employees to, to do health risk analysis, and we gave them 25 bucks to do it. We didn't follow up with the biometrics. The biometrics are the most important part of it because the biometrics are the blood, uh, the blood work that give you the numbers. In a long-term strategy, this is uh, year one of a three-year plan. Because as we go, take a look at the insurance programs going into 2012 and 2013, the insurance premium, what our employees pay for insurance, is going to be tied to whether or not they take a health risk analysis and go through the biometrics. Now, should you choose not to take and vote the $40,000, that's only going to delay the program for a year. So we'll be one year later in terms of trying to capture some savings through our, health, through our insurance claims costs by not having this information. And of course, once you have this information, then we're going to design all of our wellness programs around those that, how we can help these people get better in their high risk areas. Uh, so that's the, that's the Tom, plan. Uh, Tom, I have a question. If uh, this $40,000 is spent to incentivize people to take the H health risk assessment and the biometrics, the blood work, et cetera, in your opinion, will we, more, will we, will we, re, we recoup this forty thousand dollars annually. Uh, more than that, the forty thousand dollars comprises about one point four percent of the total medical insurance budget for two thousand and eleven. Because that budget is over nine million dollars. So, forty thousand dollars is nothing to spend, and very likely get something in the neighborhood of a five to ten percent return on claims. So that's the numbers, at least what we've been told and what we've worked through. 
Any other questions? Thank you, Tom. Uh, can you stay up there, um, just in case anybody has any more questions? Vice President yes, Rinfleisch? You answered my question. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have uh, Alderman Hammond. Uh, a couple questions. Um, first off, currently, under the <laughs> plan we're under, are preventive maintenance things <coughs> like um, physicals, those types of things, part of their plan where yes, they can they go? Are. Is there a cost to them to do that? Covered at 100 percent. It's covered at 100 um, percent. And I would assume as part of that, you know, things like biometrics when you go get a routine physical are, are done through that. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my concern is a little bit about the long-term benefit. And I, I know it's too bad Alderman Balk isn't here because I know that Johnsonville has a program that's very successful. Um, but most of them that I've seen, at least in my limited scope, um, haven't been um, terribly successful unless there is a, a bite out there like a higher health insurance premium if you don't participate. Um, so that being the case, I'm just kind of curious why we're going to incentivize them this year and then penalize them next year if they don't. Um, I'm not sure that the savings, and again, I haven't seen a, a written three-year written three-year plan that you were referring to or what the ben or the uh, return on investment is going to be of this, but I guess I just have some concerns that it may not be there because, uh, again, I'll be the first to admit, uh, I thought maybe you were talking about my diet when you were talking about the donuts and cases of beer. <laughs> Um, you lost me when you said don't, uh, beer, though. Um, you know, I, if, if you're overweight, you know it. If you, you, know, if you have uh, various health issues, you, chances are you know it. Um, and the fact that the plan already covers physicals um, at no cost, I, I guess I just wonder why we're going to spend $40,000 when they already, got the ability, they already have the ability to have these very tests done for free. Well, number one, all of the information is strictly confidential. Number two, the results are going to be sent to employees' homes. Now, you may know you're overweight. You may know you have a drinking problem. But your wife gets that information. <laughs> you're speaking we might want to back up there. I just had a drinking <laughs> problem. If, if indeed that's the case, when your wife gets that information, she might exert a little more influence on you to see your doctor or to get some uh, corrective action taken. The point being that you have to identify the risks up front so you can address those risks. And typically speaking, most people are not going to take and go in unless they either have a problem, significant problem that's going to cause them to go to the doctor, or unless you incent them to do it so there's something in it for them. They don't get Alder, the card Alderman until Hamm after they go through the testing. Alderman Hammond, do you have any response? I would like to rebuttal that for the press's <laughs> benefit. <laughs> I know. I, I, um, but I guess my, my concern is, I mean, I don't have a problem with going and saying, look, if you're willing to be part of the solution, this is the premium you're going to pay. If you're not willing, there's a higher premium. Again, no different than what many of the successful plans do. I think we can just skip the first step. Uh, that's just my, my stance. And I, I, under, I understand the hard work you guys have put in, and I, I appreciate that. I just, I think. That's certainly a choice that the, that the council has. I recognize the fact that it's probably going to limit the savings we would have experienced the first year. Because there will be some savings with this. If you ask me to quantify it, I can't tell you what that's going to be specifically. But we will generate savings in the first year of the, plan, of the program. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. President Kittleson, did you have anything else? No, no I'm... Uh, Alderman Sampson, did you have anything more? Please. please? Yes, please. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I, I would... I understand the overall goal of that, Mr. Rice. I really, I really do. But I would just argue that the $75 to try to incentivize somebody to come in and just take a test for something that they, well, number one, probably aren't going to follow through with, more than likely, I would, I would think. Uh, if they weren't doing it before, the $75, in my opinion, is probably not going to be enough to get them in and, 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 and start doing these things and these tests. Uh, I think that the way it should be presented, if it wasn't presented, would be as an incentive, in light of things happening in, in Madison right now with, with the cost of, of, of uh, contribution levels going higher, part of an incentive for me would be to try to cut my premium levels lower. So that would be part of, if you live a healthier lifestyle, that could have a direct impact on your premiums. The healthier, healthier you are, the potentially lower that your premiums can be. That's a big enough incentive for me if it's coming out of my own pocket. Uh, the other thing would be, as silly as this is, a healthier lifestyle is pretty incentivizing to me. If, if I'm living a pretty poor lifestyle and somebody brings it to my attention that I could live healthier, maybe live a little longer, 
that's a pretty good incentive for me. I just don't believe that $75, even though when you look at the $40,000 package, can be recouped over the course of time, I think that's just not going to be enough to incentivize somebody. So I think we should just eliminate the $75 gift card, go right to the, just go right to the next step would be, this is going to potentially affect your premiums. All right, but that, that's not possible to do until the first of the year coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, and and do I think that that's, until 2012. Huh? That's fine. Thank you, Alderman Sampson. Alderman Bowers? Yes. Uh, how did you arrive at the 40,000? We have approximately how many employees? 900? 500. 500. Mm -hmm. So you multiplied five, 500 by 40? We figured if we got 60% participation. OK. So 60, 70%. The 40,000, it could be less and it could be more. Absolutely. It could be zero if nobody participates. Yeah. Uh, and, and really, if they do participate, there's no incentive for them to initiate any of the benefits, is there? Until, what, a year later or maybe never? Well, there's no incentive once they get the results right. for them going forward. Next year, if we incorporate the plan changes we're looking for, yes, there would be an incentive. Then, then there would be an incentive. Absolutely. So this would give them a year head start. Right. right. <clears throat> so we're allocating 40000 but it could be more and it could be less. Could not be more, it would be less. Oh, it could be less. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Alder Person Montemayor? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think that this is a good idea. There's lots of city employees who don't have a very healthy lifestyle. <clears throat> they know who they are, we know who they are. Maybe they don't even know who they are. But if for $75, they will take this test and find out the accurate numbers about themselves. And if that $75 does help them do something this year, it will, it will bring us some savings. It will bring some savings to their own life as well. I think this is a good idea. If few people participate, well, then next year we use the stick. But this year, I think this is a wonderful carrot to get them to live, to find out where they are, if they're willing, and then live a healthier lifestyle this year, reduce some of our costs this year. Thank you, Alder Person Montemayor. Alder Person, Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I'm the, uh, the one um, person here that's actually already under this uh, working for the county. We've had this for several years. Uh, I believe they did use the carrot the first uh, time around and uh, to try and get people to uh, participate in this and, and now we're to the point where if we do not, um, we pay a higher uh, premium. Uh, one of the things I wanted to comment on, uh, I think that it's a very successful program uh, through the county. A lot of different programs they're using to try and get people to um, take better care of themselves. Um, one of the things I wanted to bring up, uh, Mr. Rice, is, is we wanted to get them more familiar with the county clinic as well, correct? Mm -hmm. And this would be one way to kind of use that as an incentive um, to at least let them know that it's there for their using and we don't have the, uh, the same fees that we're going to pay when they do go to their, um, to their regular doctor, is that correct? Right. And then the other thing um, I guess I look at is the money, this $40,000 is coming out of the insurance fund, correct? And that is money that's left over from like the, the year before that we haven't spent or it's coming from the, the fund itself? It's coming from the, the, the money that we have budgeted this year to cover insurance claims costs. Okay. Yes. Is part of that paid for by the employees? Uh, the contribution go towards that? Well, we budget the whole amount and we collect a premium share, yes. Right. So, so I guess what I'm getting to in fund. essence is they are in some way paying possibly for a portion of this card mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Person Raisler. Alderman Hammond? Thank you. Um, just a quick question, or two quick questions. Um, we're a self-funded plan. Um, when we pay claims, obviously, we, you know, because of HIPAA and certain things, do we know what those claims are for? Yes. So we can track, maybe not by individual, but by what those claims are, so we can kind of get a history of, you know, this year we had, <clears throat> 40 people on high blood pressure medication or X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. So some of these very same trends that we're looking to, or looking to get through the health risk assessment, we could actually get through data mining our own claims history, correct? We have some of that information already. The other question I had is somebody had mentioned there were 500 employees and we're looking at $75 of employee. That's 37,500 
you mentioned that we were budgeting about 60%. Where's the rest of those dollars going to? Is there a cost to the actual program itself? No. Okay. Cost so, is being borne by UMR. Okay, so if everybody, at least at 500 employees, participates at 37,500, we're, we were, you guys were budgeting at 60%. I'm not trying to catch anybody in anything here. I just want to make sure that the, the math works out here. No, the likelihood of us spending all $40,000 is probably less than 10%. Because you yourself know if you have 500 employees, if you get 60%, you're lucky. But we had to budget a number. Okay. Okay, thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Hanna? Yeah, just one more clarification. I just want to make sure people understand that the $40,000 was not set aside in the insurance fund budget for this. This is taking away from reserves to pay possible claims. Right. Okay, I have no more lights on my board. Thank you, Tom. Um, you know, I, I think Alder... Uh, all the person Montemayor used the term, uh, you know, this is the carrot and we can always use the stick. Um, you know, in my opinion, the carrot is always more effective than the stick. Um, you know, speaking for myself, I went for years without getting a physical. I've gotten two of them in the last two years. I know what my numbers are now. Um, and uh, believe it or not, they accused me of working out, which really scared me. But uh, um, I think it's a, uh, you know, I... For people that do not uh, take the HRA, and especially the biometrics, do not get the blood work done, et cetera, uh, it makes you well aware of, of where you are physically. Um, and if we can recoup what we're putting into this, uh, and it'll be a maximum of $40,000, and get one year jump on uh, improve, improving our long-term costs and in insurance, and let's face it, healthier employees go to work more. They take less sick days. They take more, less comp time. Um, I think it's, uh, it wouldn't be a bad thing, but of course it's up to the vote of the Common Council. I have more light, no more lights up here, and we have a roll call vote, please. Okay. Hannah? No. Heidemann? No. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? No. Wongaman? No. Boren? No. Bowers? No. Decker? No. Hammond? No. Four eyes, nine no's. Motion fails. Moving on, 2444, by finance recommending setting rates and billing policies for the provision and billing of ambulance services as provided to the public by the Sheboygan Fire Department in passing the attached substitute resolution, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, move that the reporting committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Hammond, if you'd like to begin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to make an amendment um, that uh, for those looking at the last, the second to last paragraph, and I'll read it for those. Therefore, only information presented to the Common Council by the Fire Chief and or Finance Director in an open session of a public meeting shall be made available to those rep requesting the information under the guise of Wisconsin Open Records or um, Freedom of Information Act. I move we strike that um, from the document and uh, Attorney McLean can maybe provide a little more information as to why. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Can you clarify where that's at, Alderman Hammond? I'm sorry, it's on the very last page, second to last paragraph of the uh, 2336 document that's attached. Third page. On the substitute, okay. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Six. Okay, there we go. Midway. Okay, so you want to strike the entire uh, paragraph? Yes. Okay. Is everybody aware of where that's at? Mm hmm Okay. Steve? Uh, thank you, Mayor. This uh, Alderman Hannon, Hammond's uh, making the motion at my request. Uh, number one, the public records law really speaks for itself. I don't think the council through this uh, language ought to be uh, adding to or putting conditions on 
what is available under the open records law. And that's what this is really saying. It's saying that we won't make available these particular records under the open records law uh, unless they've been presented to the common council by the fire chief or the finance director in an open session of a public meeting. Uh, if they are open records under the open records law, they need to be released, period. Uh, whether or not the fire chief or the police chief or the finance director or anybody has presented them to the council. If they're not open records under the open records law, and there are many exceptions, including federal uh, privacy laws, HIPAA and that sort of thing, that provide protections for, from release uh, and disclosure of confidential information, then they're not uh, subject to the open record law and won't be released in any event. So it really doesn't add anything here to have this language in, and I'm concerned that it could potentially be used just as a uh, shield to say, you know, we're not going to provide you that information because uh, neither the finance director or the fire chief happened to present that information to the council in an open session. Uh, again, under the law, if it's either public information or it's not. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Uh, this is on the amendment only. Uh, we're speaking just on the amendment. Is there any other discussion on the amendment? Are you doing all eyes on mm -hmm. Okay, on voting on the amendment only, which is striking the paragraph uh, starting therefore only information. Uh, all in favor of striking that say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries, the amendment carries. Now, under discussion on the amended resolution, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> I would encourage my uh, fellow council members to go along with me tonight and vote on this document. Uh, the uh, I remember a few months ago, Alderman Hanna and I sat in on interviews of the new billing service, and uh, I'm impressed what I've seen so far. Uh, we've took two finance meetings going over the rates and then also the, uh, the billing policies. One thing that I, that I like the new billing service is doing is their hardship policy, uh, finding out up front very soon which people uh, qualify for a hardship, either to have their bill eliminated or lowered based on, on their income. It's, it seems like a very good program. The other thing we added in in finance, down uh, two items from the hardship policy, was the standard billing practice for private pay patients. This is the peer group that is always the most difficult to collect from because they, they don't have insurance for one reason or another. And what we're going to be doing different with this billing service that we didn't do other, un, under the old billing services is that for the people that are uh, private pay patients, if we have not heard anything from those patients within 30 days, th the new billing service is going to make a phone call to those patients and try to qualify them to see whether indeed they, they do uh, qualify for a, a hard, the hardship policy and get them on a, a, a payment plan as soon as possible. With our old billing service, these, non, uh, these private pay patients that didn't have any insurance or were not Medicare or Medicaid. In some cases, it may have taken 120 days before any significant contact was made with these people. And we, f we feel that by at least having this contact after 30 days and seeing whether, yes, they do qualify for a uh, for hardship policy to have part of their bill reduced, or in some cases, if they're true hardship, they wouldn't have to pay anything. But we feel that that's going to be a huge step in improving the, uh, the collections in that, in that payer group. So again, uh, I encourage my fellow council members to vote for this tonight. I think uh, this is a huge upgrade over what we had with the old billing service. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Alderman Hanna. Thank you. Uh, you know, and, I, and I'd really like to, to thank the, the work the Finance Committee's done on this. Uh, unfortunately, I've had uh, the experience of having my mom use the ambulance service four times in the last 45 days. Uh, and Alderman Bourne is correct. Uh, first off, uh, for our senior citizens, it's confusing as these bills start to come rolling in. So as much communication as we can put into it, uh, I think is going to be very, very helpful. Uh, folks want to pay. They want to be informed. But an awful lot of paperwork comes flying at them real fast. And if they don't have people helping them with it, 
uh, gets confusing. So I commend the committee's recommendations. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Is there any further discussion? There's no discussion. Roll call, please. Uh, just to note, Alderman Hammond, can we make it clear that it's the substitute resolution we're passing, uh, not the regular? Is that okay? Yes. All right. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 12 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries 24. 45 by finance recommending a transfer of appropriations in the 2011 budget establish revenue and appropriations for lead hazard rehabilitation grant alderman hammond thank you mr mayor um, i move the reported committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage second we have a motion and a second to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage under discussion there is no discussion. Roll call, please. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 2446 by Public Works recommending entering into an access agreement with Wisconsin Public Service Corporation for temporary access to the Camp <coughs> Marina park area and surrounding city property for the purpose of completing an environmental remediation project overseen by the US EPA pending approval by the city attorney. Public Works, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. And the resolution be put upon its passage. And the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second on that. Under discussion, it maybe wouldn't be a bad idea for Director Bittner just to explain what's going to be going on down there in the next few months and that our partner, uh, Wisconsin Public Service Corporation, is going to be spending uh, several million dollars, I believe it's four or five million dollars on this project down there. And Director Bittner can maybe speak to as, as exactly what's going to be going on down there and possibly a little inconvenience for our citizens this summer. Bill? Wisconsin Public Service is also known as the gas company. So. Uh, the work under this contract is really um, the work that's being undertaken by Wisconsin Public Service that's part of the bigger dredging picture and cleanup of the, of the entire river. And there's two things that'll kind of go on this next, next summer, which is the dredging of the river, which will, will be done by an EPA contract, but also this work, which is a remediation of the area just this side of what I call is Boat Island, I believe is, is Island. the term. And to do that, they'll actually be building dams upstream and downstream of Boat, Boat Island and dredging out material that's contaminated with uh, coal tar from years of uh, coal gas uh, uh, back in the history of the, of the community. To do such, they obviously need to use that part of the river, but more importantly, that part of the bank. And so they'll be setting up uh, someplace just to the south of, of the condominiums near Penn Street Bridge, Pennsylvania Street Avenue Bridge, uh, down to Wisconsin. And we'll really be closing that riverfront trail that small area of park and, and using that uh, to dredge material out of the river, load it, dewater it, and then haul it away for, for disposal at, at the appropriate site. With that will really be quite a bit of disturbance of that area for most of starting relatively quickly in April, but through the entire construction season in the summer. Uh, Workers Park will not be affected, but the trails to it will be. They'll be fencing their entire site uh, and have some degree of truck traffic in and out because they'll actually be removing this material from the river. So we'll see a, a lot of activity on that site uh, throughout the, uh, the whole summer period. Questions, I guess. Thank you, Bill. 
Yeah, this is uh, this is in conjunction with the uh, Superfund dredging of the river, which we had a meeting today on, pre-construction meeting. Uh, the river dredging should begin on the Superfund portion um, somewhere in about two weeks. That the the uh, dredge will be put into the river. They'll start laying the pipeline and all. That's the Superfund portion. Uh, as, as Bill stated, there will be some dams built out from this bank of the river down by the Camp Marina site, which will run diagonally out to the tips of Boat Island, which will close off that portion of the river. Uh, and that will be a, a separate project, uh, which they will manually dredge that rather than hydraulic dredging it. And they will, will uh, be treating that soil right on site there. So it's, uh, it will be an inconvenience all summer long uh, between the uh, Superfund and this portion of it. And if we're fortunate, uh, sometime toward the middle to the end of the summer, we can come right back down the river, uh, beginning with the legacy portion, which will give us additional depth uh, from the A Street Bridge up. Um, but we're looking at uh, two years of inconvenience on the river, but the end result uh, will hopefully be that we will have a clean river and a navigable river. But it, it will definitely be uh, uh, noisy at times. Um, Boaters will especially have to be careful because there'll be pipelines in the water, and uh, it, it will be an inconvenience. But uh, when it's done, for the first time in 35 years, we'll have a navigable river, which is the, the end result of it, and uh, even more importantly, a clean river. So that's, uh, but this is one portion of it, and hopefully everything works out where this continues on for the next two summers. Is there any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Koff? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 2447 lies over, 2448 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 2347, RO number 425, 1011 by the city clerk submitting a communication from Richard Hartman, Hartman inquiring about the needed appointments for the government structure committee. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file the RO. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and file under discussion. Vice President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I have had, had conversations with Mr. Hartman uh, regarding uh, his concern that the committee, uh, called the Government Structure Committee, uh, has not met. Uh, if you recall, we've had some resignations, as the letter points out, um, including the uh, chairperson. As vice chair, uh, my understanding is that I do become uh, chairman after resignation of that said committee, although we don't really have particularly have specific rules that dictate that. Uh, however, uh, the way the, council, the committee was made up, uh, even with a full membership, it was very difficult to hold meetings. Uh, we've had several meetings that were canceled due to a lack of quorum. I think uh, when I made the resolution to recreate this committee, I used the same names that were very specific. Uh, and these individuals by name were appointed to the committee instead of having a representative from Chamber of Commerce or somebody that could uh, can step up and follow that. Um, there is important work that has not been examined yet uh, that uh, the Government Structure Committee was, was convened to do so, including um, Two important documents was redistricting, which we began to look at, but the committee whole looked at that instead. Uh, and then the two positions of the city clerk's office and the city attorney's office as well. Uh, so I, w I welcome the opportunity down the road to uh, continue to study uh, and looking at ways of more government can be efficient. Uh, Strategic Fiscal Finance Committee is also looking at certain ways. So we're, we have things being looked at right now, uh, but having just a few weeks left in this committee when this committee was set up to exterminate anyway, uh, I recommend that we uh, let it go now and, and look at perhaps a more efficient and better way of, of finding efficiencies in government down the road. Thank you, Vice President Rinfleisch. I do agree with you. This committee is due to sunset at the end of this council year, so to appoint more people at this time would be uh, fruitless. Is there any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. We can do an all eyes. All, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 2340 no. 49 RO number 426 1011 by the Redevelopment Authority recommending approval of the new ground lease between RDA and Claremont New Frontier LLC and the termination agreement between the Redevelopment Authority and the Great Lakes Companies Inc., Blue Harbor Resort Sheboygan LLC, and Blue Harbor Resort Condominium LLC. Alderman Hammond. 
Thank you, Your Honor. I uh, move that the report of officer be accepted and placed on file. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and place on file under discussion. Alderman Hammond. Uh, again, as uh, many of you are aware of what's going on between Claremont and New Frontier, um, this is just terminating the agreement and then uh, that we currently have down there and allowing for the new operating agreement, or excuse me, the new ground lease to take place. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Is there any further discussion? We have a motion to accept and file. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 2332, resolution number 224-1011 by Alderman Hammond authorizing entering into a development agreement, agreement with Continental Properties 194 Fund LLC for development of the former Kmart site, 2633 South Business Drive. Alderman Hammond. Thank you again. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Chad. Not too often that you have somebody I wants to stand up. I would ask that this up. be referred to the Finance Committee. Um, it lied over at the last meeting because we didn't have the agreement figured out. We've since been able to con conclude the agreement. The Finance Committee hasn't looked at it yet. So if we could refer to the next finance. I would make the motion. I'd pull, pull my first move that we moved. We have finance. a motion. Do we have a second? second? Motion and a second to refer to Finance. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? To finance it goes. Thank you, Chad. Okay, moving on. Other matters authorized by law. Attorney McLean. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. 2451 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2011 and June 30, 2012. That will go to law and licensing. 2052 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Wydell J. Vaughn requesting a waiver of the sex offender residency restrictions. We'll go to public protection and safety. 2453 is a communication from Diane Hackbarth <coughs> requesting permission to put a banner over South A Street in the 500 block to help promote awareness of their mission to create a world free of MS during their Walk MS Sheboygan on Sunday, May 1st. To public works. 2454 is a claim from Horace Hummel for damages to his vehicle when a snowplow hit something hard which kicked the plow blade out and striking his car in the rear driver's side door. To risk management. 2455 is a resolution authorizing entering into an agreement between the city and Greg Linder for the purpose of permitting the police department's emergency response team to use property at 2901 Calumet Drive for SWAT practice. Will be referred to public protection and safety. 2456 is an RO by the Redevelopment Authority uh, indicating that they, they met today at noon, discussed the final version of the ground lease between the Redevelopment Authority and Claremont New Frontier Resort and the termination agreement between the Redevelopment Authority and the Great Lakes Companies, Blue Harbor Resort Sheboygan LLC and Blue Harbor Resort Condominium LLC recommending Recommends approval of the final ground lease, including section 38 of revision number 11, and the final version of the termination agreement and operating lease. That lies over. Okay, okay thank you, Steve. Um, we uh, are going to be uh, convening in closed session. Uh, we will reconvene in the open session uh, for the votes on the items discussed in closed session. I believe we will be going off the air at this point. I'll make a motion to convene in closed session mm -hmm. under the exemption contained in section 19.85 1E Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of deliberating regarding the termination of various agreements and new leases relating to the proposed sale by Great Wolf to Claremont New Frontier of the Blue Harbor Resort where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, everybody will have to leave the council chambers. We will be going off the air at this point and will not be returning on air this evening. Uh, we will take a uh, six minute recess while everything is uh, closed down. We need a roll call, Bob. Oh, we need a roll call on closed session first before everybody leaves. Roll call, please. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Samson. Aye. Wongman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye.
Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Path? Aye. Ann Kittleson? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, we'll return.